I've noticed that people like to make other people feel alone because if you are alone and you think that you're the only person struggling then you're less likely to make excuses for yourself you're more likely to just kind of take the beating and say thank you may I have another that's kind of how it is but when you realize that you aren't the only one that other people are struggling too then you're much more likely to have compassion for yourself and to say you know I'm not going to subject myself to an unlimited amount of unfairness and abuse so what happens a lot of times is we get segregated off into our own little silos to face whatever challenges we must face by ourselves. And then the powers that be come along and say, well, why are you having such a hard time? Why are you struggling so much? Because nobody else has that problem. And if you don't know anybody else, then who are you to challenge that? You just assume that you suck and other people are doing fine and you're just a terrible, uh, you know, terrible fit for the duty that has been assigned to you. That's what you think. I've seen this at work. You know, there were times I was given a duty assignment at work and, you know, I struggled to produce the results that were were asked of me years ago and then I had the privilege of moving on from that assignment and working in a more corporate position and the irony of this is I had the armchair position to kind of hang around and observe my own replacements the future people who came along after I left to see you know how did they how did they fare and the crazy thing is, I realized they didn't actually fare any better. They didn't produce better results. They didn't have a better experience. They didn't make better decisions. They produced very similar results overall. And furthermore, across many different facilities and in different, different circumstances entirely, I, I came to realize, having that bird's eye view, that the problems that I experienced in one particular facility were actually very similar to the same problems that were experienced in almost every facility. So then from a higher level position within my company, I came to realize it really wasn't exactly my problem before. It was a much more systemic problem. It was a problem that everybody in my role was experiencing it was something that every every part of the company was experiencing but when i was just me by myself alone without any higher level perspective i had no way of knowing i just assumed that it was my lack of ability to figure it out that was the reason for all of the problems that we had and it's really kind of vindicating to look at a broad group of people of all different strengths and weaknesses and dispositions <laughs> and realize that every single one of them has similar struggles and you're not alone but when you know that then then you'll go to bat for yourself because nobody likes being sent into a no-win situation so what often happens is people get sent into a no-win situation but they're told that it's not a no-win situation they're told that all they need to do is do their part and everything will be fine and then if if they fail then they're just reminded shamefully of the fact that they're failures 
and told to do better. And so we often wind up getting stuck on these treadmills of failing at something that can't even be won. But we don't realize it. And what's actually a system designed to do us harm and keep us from ever being able to get our heads above water, we view as a personal evidence of our own failings, of our own lack of being enough. And it's important to remember that you are enough. When other people come along and tell you that you're not enough, despite the fact that you've given the best you know how to give, that's, that's really gaslighting. Gaslighting being the practice of going to somebody who really doesn't have anything wrong with them, and then kind of tricking them into thinking that they've got a problem. When in reality, they don't have a problem, you're making a problem for them, and then you're telling them that the problem that you have manufactured is actually their fault, and they've done it to themselves. It's like the, the kid that's taking the hand of his younger brother and smacking his younger brother with his younger brother's own hand, and he's saying, stop hitting yourself, why are you hitting yourself, and it's just a funny sort of a cruelty that's being done. It's like that, only it's adults that do this. In all sorts of organizations and relationships, people come along and they make others feel like less. They make other people feel like they're not good enough, that they're not adequate, that they don't have enough ability. When in reality, all they're really doing is setting people up for failure and then trying to make sure that those people never actually have the resources and the vision and the clarity of knowledge to know what's being done to them. You have to go to bat for yourself because if you don't, nobody else will. You can't really trust people when they say that they have your best interest at heart because very seldom is that true. People will protect their interests and in a perfect world, their interests would align with yours. But quite often, that's not really how it works out. To the contrary, you have some soulless corporation that's going to tell you that they're like family, so that they can get you to sacrifice your actual family or your life in service to them. And ultimately, they'll throw you out just like the trash but not until they get you to sacrifice a very big part of your life thinking that you're doing it for a cause that's worthy of sacrifice. But the truth is, in many cases, it's just a game. It's a no-win scenario designed not to be winnable. But you make it a matter of personal pride to try to win that unwinnable battle. And so you rage against the darkness, struggling and struggling, struggling, trying to be good enough. And unfortunately, you're chasing a goal that can't be reached because it's a marker that doesn't exist. The truth is most people are in similar situations, facing similar challenges. Different, but still similar. Different in the sense that they take different forms, but similar in the sense that they ultimately are the same type of fundamental humanity at play. You feel alone, you feel lonely, you feel frustrated, you struggle to face your own mortality, all of the things you worry about, other people worry about those things too. All the times when you stop and you think, well, I'm not good enough, I can't figure out how to win. Well, there's a lot of other people that also face those same doubts, those same questions. And knowing you're not alone doesn't automatically fix problems. You still have to face your challenges, and if they're difficult, 
then knowing that you're not alone doesn't really make them easier. But it does make a case for being compassionate to yourself. Don't bait yourself up all the time for things beyond your control. And also don't conclude that other people can be trusted just because they tell you that you should trust them. There's a lot of smiling faces out there in the world who on the surface are polite and kind and patient and benevolent, but the truth is they cannot be counted on. And the perhaps hard but absolute truth of life is that if you go to people who cannot be counted on and you make a wager that you're going to be able to trust them when it really counts, they will betray you. Not because they mean to, but because that's their nature. So you're better off to understand that right from the get-go and protect your own rational self-interest so that other people don't have the opportunity to wrong you. And if something doesn't feel right, or if it doesn't feel fair, don't try to make excuses for it. Don't go to other people who are clearly doing something that doesn't serve your interests and then make a hundred different excuses for why they have their reasons and why they didn't really mean what they did. Things usually are exactly what they look like they are. That's the, that's the truth. If something doesn't seem fair, usually it's not. If your gut feeling says something, usually you're not as far off as you might think. And people can make all kinds of excuses and they can have all kinds of political verbiage that they use and they can hide behind all sorts of little masks and 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 shields and play games with you. But the truth is you have to be an advocate for yourself. There's a movie called Office Space, I believe. In any case, there's this guy and he had his office desk and then the boss told him to put his office desk into the closet and took him off payroll. So this guy has been getting no money and he goes to HR and HR tells him to go talk to the boss and he goes and talks to the boss. And the boss tells him to go talk to HR. So this guy is just working for free in the closet while HR send, sends him to management and management sends him to HR. He's just being totally toyed with and gamed and disrespected. But he doesn't really understand what's going on. So he just is frustrated and he's kind of trying to figure out how he can how he can, you know, make it through the day under these circumstances, but he's not super smart. So he doesn't, he doesn't get it. And, and that's, that's kind of how it is. I think in our, in our lives, a lot of times we get played, but we don't, we don't understand it. And so we just go in circles and, and we get manipulated because sometimes you got to call a spade a spade. If it, if it looks a certain way, that's what it is. If somebody seems like they're not doing the right kind of thing, then that's probably, you know, that's probably basically what their character is. And we want to say, well, good people, they do things that aren't, you know, aren't good sometimes. They're still a good person. Good people just do bad things. Well, no, not really. If somebody's doing things that are harmful, they're not a good person for you. That's the truth. Does that mean maybe you have to let go of some things? Yeah, it does. It means you have to surrender things, even things that seem good, things that you want to be good for you, but the truth is they're not. You have to surrender them and you have to clear out the library of your mind. 
And then you accept that there's an empty space there. There is a Bible verse, and the Bible verse says that there is a demon-possessed man, and the demon-possessed man had the demons cast out of him, and the demon who was inside him left, and so he he was free. And it says the man had had uh, had essentially cleaned out his heart and left his inner self free and clear and empty. And then the demon that had been cast out went back and forth, couldn't find a place to rest, and so he returned to the place where he had been cast out before, but he took a bunch of other evil spirits with him and reinvaded this man's soul. And in the end, it says that the later state of the man was worse than the first state of the man because that man had become free, but then he allowed that very same evil spirit to come back into the empty void that he had in his soul. And it's kind of that way. In life, we cast things out. We find a path to freedom. But then with that, there's a void. With that, there is the realization that we have to reconcile being alone. And sometimes we aren't comfortable with that. So instead of leaving empty space, we allow the same evil that we tried to free ourselves from to return. And it's important that we learn to allow empty spaces. It's better to have nothing than it is to have something which is evil. And finally, I would touch briefly on the banality of evil. We like to think of evil as something which is deeply nefarious, something that is going out of its way, trying to be dark and malicious. But the truth is, the great evils in our lives are not going to be hideous demonic figures that are rising up out of some sort of a glowing pentagram to cast their spell on us. They're not going to be those fairy tale evils, the things that are easy to recognize. Quite often, they're people with good intentions that do things that are harmful to our spirit. People who intend to be righteous, who intend to be kind, but the, the truth is their actions don't align with that mantra. And it's important for us to understand that. There's good people all over the place who are doing bad things. Good people who are trying to... Good people who are trying to be, you know, trying to do the right thing. But at the end of the day, they don't do the right thing. And it doesn't matter whether a person intends to do what's right and they don't, or if they intend to be evil. If they do things that harm us, we have to protect ourselves from that negative energy. And then we have to safeguard and gatekeep our soul so that we're not immediately returned to the state from which we fled. Always be an advocate for yourself. Always take your side because no one else necessarily will. Always trust your instincts. And as you seek to find freedom for your soul, be careful after you cast out evil things what you let back.
back in. Till next time. Thank you for watching. <laughs>